Today I face a mountain that I have no strength to climb. For the struggles of this journey's left me weak, both in body and in mind. Where I stand to the peak is a distance on my own I cannot reach. So this journey of a thousand steps begins right here upon my knees soon i'll soar like an eagle high on wings of grace far into the heavens where i can almost see god's face To heights I never knew What once looked like a mountain's just a hill From heaven's point of view I may face things tomorrow I can't comprehend today Circumstances so uncertain makes me weak And I can't find the strength to pray But I'm living in the promise I'll never leave you, I will always see you through So what's this mountain to an eagle flying high? heaven's point of view soon i'll soar like an eagle high on wings of grace far into the heavens where i can almost see god's face Rising in his splendor to heights I never knew. What once looked like a mountain's just a hill from heaven's point of view. What once looked like a mountain's just a hill from heaven's point of view. Let's go to the Lord right now. Father, we thank you for everything that you've done for us, dear Lord, not just for today, but yesterday and the days before. And Father, we praise you for what you've gone on and prepared. You said you'd give us a son, dear Lord. Not that he would come into the world and, and to condemn it, but that it would be saved through him. Father, we thank you for that marvelous gift, that precious gift that you've given us over 2,000 years ago. We can still sit back and, in our hearts. We can ponder that day that each and every one of us received that gift. And Lord, I just pray that everyone with us today has received that precious gift, the atoning gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, if they've yet to receive it, I pray that today... It's the day that they would receive the precious gift of your son's blood. The price that he's paid on Calvary for every man, woman, and child on this earth. He said all that would call unto him, he would in no wise cast out. And Father, we praise you for those wonderful promises we have in him today. But most of all, we look forward to the glorious day of that appearing. Just as the, the angel said, as you see him going today, you'll see him come again in the clouds and father we look forward to that day 
Just as John said, even so, come quickly, Lord. But Father, we just pray. I pray your blessings upon your people today. I pray that you would work greatly and mightily in this place, that the hearts and lives would see the marvelous gift and understand the preciousness of your Son, dear Lord Jesus Christ, and what it means not just to their life, but through them that others may be touched and glorified, dear Lord. Father, continue to use us mightily for your purpose. Yes. Be with us today. Bless the preacher today. Bless Carlton as he gives us the message that you've pressed upon his heart. He's worked so diligently to prepare. Father, we just pray that you use him greatly and mightily. In Christ's name we pray and ask all these things. Amen. Amen.
the King. He is the reason for the season, and we celebrate the Lord today. How blessed and how mightily blessed we are of the Lord. Hey, Brad, Merry Christmas to you, brother. Amen. And Merry Christmas to you today. And I pray that your heart will be blessed with the music today. And later on, we're going to be preaching on the message, the virgin birth. We have reason today to thank God that this Savior came, born of a virgin, Oh, I know there's a lot of dispute in the world today pertaining to the cross, pertaining to the manger, pertaining to the virgin birth, pertaining to everything that biblically the Word of God says in this great account. But the fact of the matter is today, it matters not what men say or what men think. It only matters today what God has declared. And God, He brought forth a Son. They called His name Jesus and He would save His people from their sins. Thank God for the salvation we have. By the way, Merry Christmas, brother. Amen. Well, God is good, and it's a great season of celebration. Merry Christmas, brother. Amen. Well, it's just that spirit around Gethsemane. People shaking hands and hugging necks and wishing each other a Merry Christmas. How blessed and mightily blessed we are today of the Lord. We're going back into the worship today. Visit us on the internet, itgm.org. Visit us on Facebook, Gethsemane Baptist Church, Lynchburg, Virginia. But even better, visit us right here at 411 Blue Ridge Street, located in the beautiful heart of Lynchburg, Virginia. This is Gethsemane Baptist Church. Easily found, conveniently located, and we care for you. Come experience the people and experience, more importantly, the great grace of our God. I pray your heart will be mightily blessed of the Lord, and may you be encouraged today. Merry Christmas. I said that. Merry Christmas to you today. God bless you. Say
we're going to sing that first verse one more time. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye. Come and behold him, born the King of said that's weak and all God's children said and all God's children said oh we're here to celebrate him today and he's worthy of our praise isn't he he is truly the reason for the season let's give him a hand clap of praise of how thankful we are as the people of God that we have God with us today and what a blessing that is you may be seated See, the virgin is delivered in a cold and crowded stall. Mirror of the Father's glory lies beside her in the straw. He is mercy's incarnation, marvel at this miracle. For the Virgin gently holds the glorious impossible. Her love has come to walk on water and turn the water into wine. Touch the leper, bless the children, love both human and divine. Praise the wisdom of the Father who has spoken through his Son. Speaking still, he calls us to the glorious impossible. Hallelujah. was bruised for our transgressions, and he bears eternal scars. He was raised for our salvation, and his righteousness is ours. Praise, oh praise him, praise the glory of his lavished grace so full. Lift your souls now and receive the glorious impossible. Hallelujah. So praise Him, praise the glory of His lavished grace so full. Lift your souls now and receive the glorious impossible.
your Bibles this morning, and I would encourage you to turn to the book of Luke, chapter 1. And we'll be starting around verse number 26 down through verse number 38. Dealing with today one of the most controversial topics that has been going on for some time, the virgin birth. I'm sure many of you are going to be spending, your, uh, spending time with your family uh, in a traditional American Christmas celebration. You probably already have a tree that either came from Canada, if it, or if it's artificial, it probably came from China, <laughs> as you celebrate your traditional American Christmas. You probably have ornaments on that tree that came from Hong Kong, and you probably have lights all over it that came from Japan. So celebrate your traditional American Christmas. Amen. Story goes of a little girl, she waited a long time in line to uh, sit on Santa's knee. The little girl finally got to that place in that position, climbed up on Santa's knee, and of course, as typical, Santa asked, what do you want for Christmas? Well, while sitting on his knee, she asked Santa this question. She said, Santa, are you a politician? <laughs> Santa said, no, honey, I'm not a politician. Why do you ask? The little girl responded, you always promise more than you deliver. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the whole basis of our faith today rises or falls on the fact of the Bible basis and declaration of the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. If Christ Jesus is not the virgin-born Son of God, then He's not God. And we have staked our souls on this one paradigm of the biblical fact of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. The virgin birth of Christ is the most important theme in Bible theology. If you don't have that right, you can't get the rest of it right. And so it's important today that we receive what the Word of God says. Here is the story in Luke 1, starting with verse number 28. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David." And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How should this be, or how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she shall also, conceive, shall also conceive a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. And we know, of course, that was John the Baptist. For with God, here is the whole thrust of the story. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Some of you are sitting here this morning and coursing through the channels of your mind and in your spirit. All you're entertaining today is your life spells impossibility. Your situations spell impossibility. Your health challenges spell impossibility. Your financial challenges spell impossibility. Your fractured family spells impossibility. Your difficulties spell impossibility. And all you have conceived in your mind is all I'm facing is impossibilities in my life, but with God, all things are possible. 
And the word of God declares all things are possible to him that will believe. You've got to believe if you're going to receive from God. And then the final verse, and Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me, according to thy word, and the angel departed from her. Now the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus is the most frequently attacked doctrine of scriptures by critics of Christianity. It's just not in this season that we have seen over the last several years about the dispute about the manger and the dispute about the terminology of Christmas, be it, uh, you know, holiday tree, Christmas tree, all that stuff. Let's not get all hung up on the minor issues because you know what? If you know what Christmas is all about, it really doesn't make any difference what the world says. You know the reality that Christmas is about Christ, His coming, the forgiveness that He will provide, as I preached on last Sunday, and the fact that we can be the children of God. That's really the, the story of Christmas. This is the impossibility where we were impossibly ensnared and entangled up and, 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 and in the chains of sin of our own life. We had no way out of what we were in. But here this one named Jesus came and provided a way of escape that, thank God, we don't have to die in our sins, but we can be delivered by the hand of this great God who came on that Christmas day and provided salvation for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And so realizing these things, the critics are always and has always been, they were there when Jesus was born. They were there when the prophets, even in the Old Testament, prophesied of the coming of Christ this is not something new, ladies and gentlemen. You've always got those that are instruments of Satan out there that are always condemning or always criticizing or always trying to destroy the validity of the Scriptures. God's Word, the Word of God says, is settled in heaven. So whether man believes it or not, the fact of the matter is this same Jesus who was seated at the right hand of God the Father and in the book of Genesis was in the creative acts of God and spoke this world into existence. And God said, let there be and there was. Guess who was there when that happened? This same Jesus. Then you look at that God then made his masterpiece. He took the dirt of the earth, he formed it, and he formed it into his own image and he gave it the breath of life. And man, the Bible says, became a living soul. That same Jesus was there. Now down through the courses of time, you know, you look at Abraham, you look at the issues, you look at the things that happened to Israel. Then you go back to the book of Genesis because in this book, we, we find that after God had done all of that and he made man and he made woman and he placed them in a garden of perfection. That we know Adam and Eve sinned in the sight of God. And of course the Bible declares in the book of Genesis 3.15 is the prophecy of God sending this one named Jesus. And so therefore you then course down through the pages of the Old Testament. You see the prophets as they proclaim this message. Isaiah even talked not only about his birth but he also talked about his death. That he was going to die. That he would be the man of sorrows. He would be acquainted with grief. He would bear the sins of all mankind. This is that same Jesus. And so we see that in this Christmas story, then God performed this impossibility. God sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he came to die for all mankind. Hallelujah. I'm glad he came. I'm glad he came to provide a means of escape for you and I. And I'm glad today he came to a cross later on, 33 and a half years after his birth. He went to a cross and he died there. But thank God it didn't end at the cross. And thank God it didn't end at the grave. And thank God it didn't end today at that time that he was ascended 40 days later. Thank God that the message and the story still goes on. Christ, Christmas is all about the salvation, the redemption that he's offering to all mankind. Thank God he's made a way for you and I where we had no way now he is our way and I'm glad today I've experienced 
that way. I'm glad today that he today has birthed my soul into the family of God and I'm a child of the living God today. I'm telling you today, I know Christmas is real because this real Jesus came and he was birthed in this world. It was a miraculous birth. It was a miraculous ascension. It was a miraculous thing that God has provided for all mankind and thank God he works a miraculous salvation in every heart in life that will receive him. Amen. That's the power of our God. Give the Lord some praise in the house of the living God. I think he's even worthy to be stand up that we stand up over and praise his name for he is a worthy God and worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You may be seated. The doctrine is not criticized just because it's the Bible, but because all of Christianity rises or falls on its validity. And so without the virgin birth, we, we worship a man, not God. Uh, the, the Christmas story is more than trees, toys, and then Tylenol. Amen. First, the Christmas story is of spiritual warfare. Going to the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 8, the Word of God says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested or made visible, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And let me just give you a sidebar note here. He did. Amen. Amen. This is not a speculative item. This is a declaration. Satan is a defeated foe, and if you're firing him today, you're just as defeated as he is. Amen. The birth of Jesus Christ is God's invasion on planet earth in the form of a baby in Bethlehem's manger. And his name is Emmanuel, as declared by the word of God, the prophet Isaiah, interpreted meaning that God is with us. And man, I'm glad of that today. Hallelujah. I'm glad today that this God who came from heaven, he's with us. He's in this room. He's with us in every breath of your life. He's with you in every step that you take. He's with you in every trial that you encounter. He's with you in every day that you go through life because you, you've got a God who said, I promise I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And so therefore today, this Emmanuel, man, I get excited just saying his name, Emmanuel. Say that with me, Emmanuel. Oh, just say it again, Emmanuel. That means that God's with you today. There's nothing that can separate it him from you. There's nothing that can take him out of your life because he's a present tense God and he's with you at all times. Hallelujah. His name is what? It's Emmanuel. God with us. So God came from heaven to be with us. The word of God in Jesus in the incarnate word said this in John 1. In the beginning, and I'm giving you the visible proof from God's word. This is not duckology. This is the theology of God from his word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now listen to what it says in verse 14. And the Word was made flesh. That, you say, wait, wait a minute, preacher. The Word was made flesh? What is the Word? The Word is a five-letter word of a name spelled J-E-S-U-S. The Word is Jesus Christ. Amen. And so... And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. See, and that is so awesome because, you know, when you receive him, he fills your life up with the grace of God, and he fills your life up with the truth of God. Amen. So Jesus is the bright and morning star the wise men followed. And today, wise men and wise women today are still firing the light from heaven today that was sent over 2,000 years ago for their life, and his name is Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Only in Jesus are the answers today to life and living. You may think, well, I've got my life all under control. I've got my income coming in. I've got my retirement plans all set up. I've got everything under control. Well, friend, I wouldn't so much declare that. You may think you've got it under control, but I'm going to tell you what. You can have just one big rash of difficulty hit your life, be it sickness or trial or dilemma, and all your little castles that you've been building is, can be taken away in a heartbeat. Every good gift that you've got, the Word of God says from James 1.17, came from God. And my, my attractions and my treasures are not the things of this world. 
Hallelujah, the greatest gift that I've got is this Jesus living within my life and walking with me every day and being a friend that will stick closer than a brother and will never leave me nor forsake me and who's always there and who's never let me down, who's atoned for my sins, who's purchased my redemption, who's built for me a mansion in heaven. And then he tells me, don't have a troubled heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. This is that God. He's everything you need for living and everything you need for life. He is the Savior. He is the healer. He is the deliverer today. Isaiah said for, to you and I, he says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name, oh, I love this. Oh, I love it. His name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Woo, my God in heaven. Look what you got when you got Jesus. You've got everything you need in life. Amen. Everything that you can go through, He's promised the deliverance. Every problem that you'll face, He's promised the solution. Every heartache that you've got, He will mend your heart. Whatever you're in, thank God. We've got a mighty God, a counselor, a glorious God, and an everlasting Father on our side at all times. That's our God. Amen. Amen. Secondly, Christmas is the story of redemption. The angel of the Lord said, And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. See, Jesus didn't come to endorse Santa Claus. Amen. Jesus didn't come that your children could sing about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Now, we've had all those things. You know, I've been listening to, some of you probably listen to the Christmas channel right on radio. I've been enjoying the songs, you know, chestnuts roasting on an open fire, and here comes Santa Claus and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and let it snow, let it snow, let it not snow. <laughs> All those. But, you know, I was listening intently yesterday as I was cruising around town, and you know what? I start listening to those songs and the lyrics of those songs, and most of them didn't make any sense at all. I mean, they're just, they have no, no validity. They have no purpose. They're nothing but a, oh, I feel good singing all this. But it doesn't relieve anything, does it? And then I noticed something, you know, and I've been listening to this, what, for the last couple of weeks or whatever? Too long. <laughs> Trying to keep that Christmas spirit. And, you know, I started thinking, you know, of all these songs that I've heard, I could probably count on one hand or maybe several fingers that has any reflection about Jesus. Oh yeah, and, and you know, and don't don't go away from me saying, well I guess, you know, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. No, my name's not Grinch and I'm not green. Amen. And 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 my name is not Ebenezer Scrooge. I'm a born-again, washed-in-the-blood child of God and just as happy in Jesus as if I had good sense. Amen. But listen, man, I, I love to hear about what he's about. I love to receive what he's got. I love to absorb into my spirit, into the depths of my soul, this name that is above every name, this name that is named Jesus. Oh, what a mighty name, a glorious name. What a powerful name. What a life-changing name. What a solving name. What a glorious name we have in him today. Amen. Listen, Jesus didn't come to endorse Rudolph the red those reindeer or Santa Claus pulling a sleigh with a bunch of reindeer that we can't even think what their names are. Amen. Any of y'all still believe in Santa Claus? Love it. Yeah. All right. That's fine. I didn't mean to pop your bubble. <laughs> he didn't come that we could have a, it's a holiday season. Holiday season. A holiday season. A holiday season. <laughs> he didn't come to give you that. Yeah. He didn't come to give you a midwinter solstice. Where in the name of Pete did they come up with that at? You know, some of these idiotic things that they come up with, you know, 
is absolutely as about as absurd as you get. Honestly. Now, you, you tune in, and I'm not promoting 99.1 because I don't only don't listen to that. But you just tune in today when you're cruising the town and coming to church this evening. That's where you better be. Uh, and listen to some of those songs and listen to the lyrics, and they make zero sense, honestly. But, you know, we like to listen to them. It kind of makes us feel festive. And if it does that, as it actually has done for me a little bit, there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. But we've got to realize, without Jesus, without Jesus, there is no reason for this place, uh, this time called Christmas. Amen. The first Christmas Jesus came, he was a baby in Bethlehem's manger, born of the Virgin Mary. The next time he comes, he will be the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Mark that down. The first time he came, he was the Lamb of God sent from the throne of God. But let me tell you what, he will come back, my dear friend, and he will come back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and he will rule with a rod of iron. Hallelujah. For this is the exalted Son of God. He will be the Lord of glory, and he will be the light of the world. The first time he came, he wore a crown of thorns. But when he comes back, he'll be crowned with diadems and he will wear the crowns and we will praise him and worship him forevermore. Thank God he is wearing that crown today. And thank God he gives us today a robe of righteousness and a crown of glory because we are the children of God that we can place back at his feet one day for what he has done for us. Amen. The first time he came, he was hung on an old Roman rugged cross. The next time he comes, he will sit on the golden throne of the of, of David in the city of Jerusalem and he will rule there and we shall rule with him. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. I'm glad we've got such a God on our side. Amen. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that he is God. Amen. Hallelujah. And by the way of his kingdom, there will be no end. Some claim Jesus was just a good teacher. Wrong. Jesus didn't come to be just a good teacher. Good teachers don't claim to be God. Some say, well, Jesus was just a good example. He didn't come to just be a good example. He is the only example. Some say that he was a religionist. He didn't come to provide a means of religion. He came to give us a means of redemption. Amen. Some say Jesus was just a myth. Well, I'm telling you what, friend, it's no myth about this. And he was not a mistake. He is still, and he is still lifted up as the very son of almighty God. And he came that we today would not have to go down to the depths of hell and our sin and our shame. But thank God that we can have a home secured and provided for us in a place that is called heaven. What is Jesus today? Well, to the weary, Jesus is wonderful. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you're weary in the cares of this world. Give it all to Jesus today and you can celebrate just how wonderful he is. To the confused today, Jesus, as Isaiah said, he is the mighty counselor. He'll always give you the right direction in life. To the weak today, he is the mighty God who will lift you up and carry you today through every storm and every trial and every trouble and every valley that you'll go through. To the orphan today, he's the everlasting father who took you in as an orphan but made you a child of the king. Hallelujah. There are no orphans in the family of God. We are all heirs and joint heirs with the God of heaven. Hallelujah. For the trouble today, he's the prince of peace. And if you've got trouble in your life, let me tell you what, he can turn your trouble into triumph because he's the God who brings peace in a time of difficulty, in a time of struggle in our lives. To the sick, he is still the great physician, Jehovah Rapha, who will heal your body. Some of you have family members and yourself are facing times of struggle and difficulty. Let me tell you what, it's God out our Savior, our Lord, our Rapha, our healer, our deliverer, who will bring healing to our bodies if we'll put our confidence in him today. He doesn't practice medicine. He is perfect medicine, amen, for he is the healer. To those who are walking in darkness, thank God he's the light of the world. Who is Jesus today? He is the answer, and thank God he has the answer. He is Jesus. He's the everlasting Father. And when you look at the lights, you know, in the Christmas tree, you know, remember today, He is the light of the world in a time and a season of darkness as this world is in. As you look at the tree, the Christmas tree, remind yourself that He died on a, a tree called Calvary. 
the cross for our sins. When you look at the beautiful wreaths, remind yourself that wreath has no beginning and that wreath has no end. And he is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And today he has no end. Hallelujah. And when you receive him into your life, your life has no end, but your life has glorious beginnings and glorious everlasting joy because you're in the presence of a mighty God. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I want to thank today the atheists of this world. Every one of them today that has a Christmas tree up. Amen. And if you're watching my television, you better go in your living room or wherever you're hanging out and tear it down. Because you know what? You just made a witness today of the fact that Jesus is the light of the world. Because that's what it's all about. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So today, you know, I contend today there are no atheists anyway. To declare there is no God, you just said there's a possibility there can be a God. Amen. This world's in a mess, but thank God Jesus can straighten everything out if you'll put your heart and your life in his hands today. And then the third thing is the controversy of the Christmas story. Was Jesus Christ born of a virgin? Oh, we've heard that story. Was Mary conceived of the Holy Spirit? We've heard that question. Among the religionists today, we find they're teaching Jesus is not the Son of God. Wrong. They teach that he was not virgin born. Wrong. They teach that miracles are a myth. Wrong. Wrong. And so if Jesus wasn't born of a virgin, then Jesus is not God. If Jesus was not born of a virgin, then all his teachings are fraud. And if that be the fact today, the scriptures is not sacred. And our faith is unfounded. And our worship is mis misled or misdirected today. And then Calvary, this Jesus dying on that cross was for nothing. Not one sin can be forgiven if Jesus was not virgin born. Amen. And we're all lost and we're marching into a dark eternity in an abyss called hell. But I'm here to tell you today, the big question is, was Jesus born of a virgin? I'm going to tell you, Jesus is his name. And yes, he was born of a virgin today. And yes, our God is real today. And yes, today he did come. And yes, he did die. And yes, he did go back to the Father. And yes, he is coming again. And we've got reason to shout the victory because our God is real. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And let me just give you this post note. He was virgin born. All these skeptics that say he wasn't, they won't there. But there were witnesses that are recorded in the pages of God's word that said it did happen. And if there wasn't one witness in the Bible and God said it happened, that's all I need to know. Amen. And the church said. And the church said it again. I'm telling you, Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. The grounds for believing has not changed. They have not changed. What, what would have happened if Joseph had lacked the, the faith to believe God's message? But you remember that the angel of the Lord also appeared to him and he had a dream and God gave him the comfort and gave him the direction and gave him the peace of knowing what was happening. It was not of man and Joseph had not. I mean, he was saying, I didn't touch that woman. And he didn't. His name wasn't Bill Clinton either. Amen. You remember those days with Monica Lewinsky? Let me tell you what. We're talking about Jesus Christ, the King of glory. We're talking about Mary, a young girl who was just, I mean, really, she was what, 17, maybe 16, 15, uh, 18 years old. Age doesn't make any difference. The fact is, God spoke to her heart. She, sent, she found favor with God. And you know, listen, some of you here today, you need to recognize the fact today of the success of Jesus in your life is based on the faith that you have in Him. Amen. The success of your life today is based on the faith that you have in the Lord. How much faith have you got? Or do you even have faith? Have you received him today? Every one of you, listen, I, I don't want to be negative here, but I'm just going to be real straight and honest with you. Every one of you sitting in this room, one day you're going to die. I can't get you to heaven. Your family can't get you to heaven. There's nothing on this earth that can get you to heaven except Jesus Christ. 
Your life may have, been, may have been a shambles. Your family may have been a shambles. Your, everything in your life, you've had poor examples and poor this and poor that. But I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing poor about Jesus Christ except he came down to this earth who was rich and became poor that we in our poverty of our sin could become rich in Christ Jesus. And today, if you don't have faith to believe, then one day you're going to find yourself in the burning fires of hell. Is it really worth it? The greatest gift that you could get this Christmas today is receiving this Jesus who came from Mary, who was born into this world, but divinely sent from Almighty God. In Him is divinity. In Him is deity. In Him is delight. In Him is everything that you need in your life. Listen, take it from someone who's been there. I couldn't live without Him. Amen. Jesus is his name. Amen. Amen. What, you know, we, we just need to come to the realization today. People are seeking today to be the assassins of Jesus Christ in their lives, and it's filled with doubt and disbelief. Let me tell you what. Stop assassinating the name of Jesus by your doubts and your disbeliefs today. Amen. To so many today, Jesus is dead in their life. And let me tell you, if you're alive in Christ, he's very much alive. And, and, and what are you going to do with the Bible says today? And, 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 and he that hath life, he that hath life, thank God, we shall never see separation from God. Amen. Amen. I thank God that he that hath life and he that believeth, you know, if you don't believe, you're dead already. Amen. The word of God says. Mary said, when, when told she would give birth to the son, listen to the words, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now listen. If we would live by the word of God today, by the pages of God's word today, you know how wonderful our life would be today. And we would discover there's nothing impossible when it comes to God. That's the Christmas story. That's the Christmas message today. From the Virgin Mary to every one of you this day. Listen, nothing is impossible to them who will believe in God. Nothing is impossible when you're going through the trials and troubles. Oh, preacher, I never have them. Oh, you better be careful how you say that. Nothing is impossible when your health is failing and you need a, mess, a special touch of healing from God. When your financial provision, knowing today you may think you've got it all covered, let me tell you what, folks, it can go away quicker than you got it. Nothing is impossible. Don't be mastered by your fears. Don't be mastered today by your doubts. And don't be mastered today by your anxieties. Well, preacher, Christmas is a bad time and I just feel so down and defeated and discouraged. That's because you chose to feel that way. You've got a God who lavishly loves you and died for you and today will give you joy in the midst of your trials, peace in the times of your problem, and he'll give you blessings in the time of your burdens. Amen. You've got to learn to trust this God who's always there. But preacher, I'm alone at Christmas. I beg your pardon. You're not. Because you'll find that there's the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you are never alone. Hallelujah. Amen. You're never alone when you're in the presence. If you start calling on him, reading his word, and understanding who he is and what he's done for you today, you'll jump up and shout for joy. For our God is a great and mighty God. Amen. With God, nothing is impossible. When you're facing the mountains of impossibility, God will make a way where there is no way. Have faith in God. Have faith in God's word. Have faith in the promises that he has declared today. And back to the story. Mary's a teenager. She's a Hebrew girl. She's carrying a divine child today. So what witness do we have? Well, Matthew has witness today. Luke has witness today. And all the theologians of the 20th century today that's disputing today the, the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, they have failed to read what Luke and Matthew have said because they are eyewitnesses of the account that took place. And let me tell you something, folks. The virgin birth today is not a speculation or a fabrication. Today it's a sanctification and a glorification of the mighty presence of a great God who came and thank God he accomplished what he came to do. He didn't come to fail. He came to win. He didn't come to win for himself. He came to win for you and I. That we don't have to die in our sins and go to hell. Thank God we can have victory. And that victory is in the Lord. Amen.
what happened to Mary and Joseph and what happened in Bethlehem and what happened in the cattle stall. What happened on that first Christmas night was witnessed and recorded as a fact in God's Word. And when you dispute that, then you are standing in front of God's face. And let me tell you what, He's the God of this world, the God of the universe. And today, when you are disputing and today you are trying to bring against Him assaults of lies against His Word, you are spitting in God's face. I'd be careful how I do that. You're not messing with just some person, mere person, some mortal of this earth. You're messing with eternity. You're messing with a God that created. You're messing with a God who's the God today that can turn your life around. Stop speaking today blasphemies about him and start speaking the truth. How great because Jesus is Lord. Amen. This God is real. As I close today, and I had to do a lot because I'm not preaching tonight. So I had to give it all to you this morning. Amen. Thank you. The Son of God was born to a virgin. Her name was Mary. And he came to deliver this world from sin. Jesus. He was the promised Savior of the world. Jesus. He is the mighty God. Jesus. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus today, he is the rock of ages. Jesus, he is the good shepherd today for those who are seeking guidance in their life. Jesus today, he is the Lord. Jesus, he is the prophet. Jesus, he is the priest. Jesus, he is the king. Jesus, he's everything that you need in your life today. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. In conclusion today, two quick points. Mary was chosen because she found favor with God. Her humble and godly life pleased the Lord. Let me say that again. Her humble life pleased the Lord. She was godly. We've got to ask ourselves this question today. Is our lives pleasing God? Honestly. Not just during this Christmas season, but is your life pleasing to the Lord? And the second thing, Mary's blessings not only brought her great joy, but it also brought her great suffering and great pain. For her son would be rejected. Maybe you're sitting here today and you have rejected him. She saw her son die on the cross. The same baby that she held in her arms and heard the first cry from heaven's child. Then she heard the cry from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then he gave the crescendo of the cross. It is finished. Hallelujah. God's redemptive plan had been completed, secured, and thank God it's all found in this one baby that was born in a manger in Bethlehem whose name would be Jesus. Do you know him today? And have you received him today? God's son, born of a virgin, placed in a manger. You can experience a miracle this Christmas. See, I still believe in miracles. I do. I really do. And it's not a man standing at the base of your chimney, twinkling his nose and shooting up through a hole that smoke goes up through. And riding in a sleigh with reindeer attached to it. I believe in the miracle of Christmas that came to a cattle stall in a manger. And went to a cross and purchased my redemption. I believe in miracles and I believe in a God who will perform a miracle in your life today. If you'll simply come to him and receive him into your life. The virgin birth. It is declared of God's word, and it is absolutely truth. And it will bring about the miracle that nothing is impossible with God. Would you bow your heads for a moment? I don't know what impossibilities that you're facing in your life today, struggles that you're going through, challenges that you're encountering, and the heartbreaks that you may have in your life today. I don't know what you're facing, but I do know today there's a God who has taken all of that, nailed it to the cross, and it will give you victory today. These altars are for you today to come. If you're not saved, you can get saved today, here today. Let me ask you a personal question as your head's bowed and your eyes are closed. Just like you and I were sitting at the table, we were talking one-on-one, 
And I looked at you and I said, let me ask you a personal question. Do you have that assurance that heaven is your home and that you've received the Lord into your heart and your life? And you responded, well, I'm not sure. Or no, I hope so. I don't know. I want you to leave here today knowing that you are saved. How do I do that, Pastor? First, do you acknowledge and do you today agree we are sinners? We've all sinned. We've all fallen short. We've all come short of it. Do you agree today that Jesus literally died on a cross for your sins? You're two-thirds of the way there. The last step is, will you ask him to come into your heart and your life right now, right where you are? Would you pray this prayer with me and receive Jesus into your life? I feel in my spirit somebody here today is lost and doesn't know Christ. And I'm not trying to embarrass you, and I will not. I'm not trying to humiliate you. I won't. I want you to go to the same heaven and enjoy the same blessings of the same Jesus that today I'm enjoying. And you can do that. Would you pray with me right now? Dear God in heaven, in Jesus' name, I, I admit, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. I admit, Lord, and I acknowledge you died on the cross for me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my life. On the authority of your word, forgive me. Make me your child. I claim this day is my day of salvation. I receive you into my life, into my heart. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. If you prayed that prayer a moment ago, do nothing to hurt you. I want to pray for you. That God will mightily bless you, lead you, and direct you in your days ahead. If you prayed that prayer a moment ago, I want you to do this one simple, simple thing. Just lift your hand and put it back down. Anyone? Thank you. Anyone? Thank you. Anyone else today? You ask the Lord into your life? Don't be ashamed to raise your hand. Nobody's going to hurt you. Nobody's going to embarrass you. Nobody's going to drag you to an altar. Nobody's going to embarrass you. I just want to pray for you, that's all. Anyone else this, this morning? You asked him into your life? But I wonder how many of you have struggles, troubles, and trials, and problems, and boy, you're thinking, yeah, preacher, Christmas, bah humbug. All I've got is troubles and no solutions. I'm introducing you today to the only solution that you need, and his name is Jesus. Would you stand to your feet? Father, would you move on our hearts today? Help us to come, and Lord, even if we're not in times of need or struggles or trials of our life, we all have a basic need, and that need is to come and to acknowledge how great you are and to praise you and to thank you for what you've done for us and the fact that you came and you died on the cross and you've purchased our redemption and you've given us eternal life. That's reason to come and say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Praise you, Lord, for what you're doing. Father, whatever the need in the hearts and the lives of the people that are here today, I pray that your mighty spirit will move on our hearts and our lives and draw us, woo us, and bring us to an altar where we can call on a God who's here and who will change our circumstances of life. We just pray right now as the music begins that, Lord, you will touch hearts and lives and draw people to these altars.